Last season, Akron won just two games, so today I'm going to attempt to fix the zips in NCAA football, but it won't be easy because I can only use players from the state of Ohio, I can only play three regular season games a year myself, and I only have five years to complete all six of the following challenges. If I fail to complete even just one of those, I have to give away a college jersey to a random person that comments on this video, and I'm not sure how I'm supposed to rebuild Akron as we're supposed to be the fourth worst team in the country. There isn't a single thing about this program that's considered good, but at least Ohio has a ton of different players we can recruit. I highly doubt that we'll ever get these five-star recruits, but I might as well put them on the board. And I couldn't find any gyms in our state, but I did find a lot of players that could fit in well on the team. I'm also going to go ahead and redshirt anybody that's from Ohio. So by the start of next season, the entire roster will only consist of players from the state. Now, unfortunately, it's become very obvious early on we're not going to land any of these players. So I'm starting to get a little concerned because there's only so many people I can go after. I should have considered the fact that there were like 15 different schools in in Ohio, which would make recruiting much more difficult. But even that wasn't our biggest issue as we lost our first game to Youngstown State. Considering we just lost to an FCS school, I'm expecting Cincinnati to rail us even worse. But I finally have some good news as I think we're going to be able to get all of the players that are on the recruiting board as of now. This includes Pat Cunningham, who is a 68 overall quarterback, and 94 speed halfback Lean O'Harrell would be in the backfield with him, assuming we're able to actually get him to commit. Since our record in this first year doesn't matter much, I'm going to get to mid-season, and we might have lost a couple pretty badly, but we did get our first win. Our biggest matchup though is going to be week 11 against Ohio, and that's because literally everybody is scheduled to visit during that game. Going into it, we might be 2-6, and six, but I have to land as many of these guys as I can, and we also need to draw in some more fans to the stadium. It is extremely embarrassing to have a visit week when there's no one in the crowd to watch, but considering it's almost halftime and we still haven't scored, I understand why it's that way. On the bright side though, I think we are going to get in here as DJ Irons will just scramble. I would like this team to be more of a run-heavy team, but I will pass when it's needed, and that is a dot. Despite our best efforts, we're trailing by 10 with less than 2 minutes remaining until I throw this laser, and you know what? I'm gonna go for 2 right now just to get it out of the way, so we only need a field goal to win. It's been a very up-and-down day, and now we need 3 defensive stops, but I can run commit because I know they're gonna run the ball. That sets up this 3rd and 15 where it looks like they're gonna go underneath, we get the stop. I honestly just have to hope our kicker has a leg to make it from here, and here we go. It is up, and it is good. That is huge for getting off to a great start in this rebuild, as 10 of the players that we were targeting have now committed to the team, including the halfback and quarterback that we really wanted. We're inching towards a top 25 class, but I don't think we're going to get it, and that's frustrating, but there's another challenge we can do. Over the five-year rebuild, we have to have a winning record versus our rivals Kent State, and our first matchup is in a blizzard. The conditions might not be great, but I think we'll be alright, and that's because junior quarterback DJ Irons has been on fire so far. I literally hope that we obliterate Kent State every time we play them, and I'm not sure how this game went so well, but I am not going to complain about it in the slightest. Okay, this honestly doesn't even make sense, but we have a chance to win the MAC in our first year, and I'm so glad I saved one game to jump into. We are sitting at 4-7, and seven, so we should not be competing for a spot in the conference championship, but I honestly think we're going to make it as we have a decent chance of winning this one. I mean, we're going to go ahead and take the easy go-ahead touchdown here, and I don't want any of you to say anything about that in the comments. With four minutes remaining, we still have a two-point lead so that's not going to affect the game too much assuming we get this. But since we couldn't, we're going to need a defensive stop and that halfback screen should not work. We have too many dudes over there. Fourth and two for a spot in the MAC championship. And since they didn't get it, it is time to burn through the rest of this game clock. But DJ Irons is going to break free and maybe we're going to score a touchdown instead. Pretty much to sum it up, we got one, they got one, and this run is going to do it as we are going to make the MAC championship game. So I can't believe it, but this is the best start we've ever had to a rebuild. Well, I'm instantly sad because Miami, Ohio took the tiebreaker from us, and I guess it's because they beat us head-to-head, -head, but we did have the better division record. All in all, it was a good season, but we're going to be losing pretty much all of our top guys because they're not from the state of Ohio, and originally the rule was just to recruit players from the state, but I want to build an entire team from there instead. This first recruiting class came in at number 42, and I'm considering making it a series where I try to win a championship by only recruiting out of one state at a time, so let me know if you all want to see that. There's honestly quite a bit of talent from Ohio, even with a lot of players being cut, and it might make this the toughest rebuild challenge I've done yet, but I am all for that. Going into season number two, there's going to be 196 players from the state of Ohio, and I cannot believe how many different people we have to choose from to try and recruit. Now, I am a little surprised we're projected to finish second in our division, especially since we're a 72 overall team, but you know what? I'll take it because recruiting-wise, things are looking terrible for us over there, and I'm honestly not sure if we're going to be able to land more than like five or ten players. We are only going to lose to Kentucky by 11, and that makes me feel like we're
like we have a chance at winning at Cincinnati this year, but we lose an OT. Our third game's against an undefeated Western Michigan team, so I'm going to get the loss. But I finally have some good news as we have landed two commits to the team. It does feel like I've made this way too challenging, though. I don't know how we're going to win a national championship in four years. But before this season gets any worse, I'm going to schedule everybody for a visit against Northern Illinois, and I'm going to try to pull off the miracle upset. I honestly can't blame people for not showing up today, but after that drop, we have a chance to get a third down stop and hold them to three, which we do. But I'm determined to make something happen, and I'm going to throw it up to Jalen Knight, who comes down with it for six. Our biggest issue honestly comes down to the fact that we just can't get a stop on defense, and I'm feeling risky here on fourth and one. I feel like we have to go for it, and it's going to pay off. Well, we might end the first half with a lead. That is a great throw, and we have one play to get into field goal range. I'm going to roll out with Dejan Jennings. He's going to find his receiver, and Williamson, is he fast enough to go all the way to end the half? No, he's not. But if we lose this game, I am going to blame him, even though it really wasn't much of his fault. He almost made an incredible play for us, and we're still in a good position as we should be taking a lead here. All I could really ask for is we would be in this game, but who was on that guy? He was legit wide open, and now we are trailing by four. I don't know if this route beats man coverage, but I'm going to try it anyway, and that's an interception. That's probably on me. Well, after a couple more thrown picks, this is the result, and we we still haven't won a game this season. I'm a little confused how that loss landed all of these players, but I'm also not going to complain as we got a 76 overall linebacker and a 77 overall tackle. I also just found a two-star Juco, Daniel Pollard, who is a 75 overall corner, and I'm hoping we can finally win against Youngstown State. They're an FCS school, and we're going to dominate. This is the exact type of performance you want to see out of your freshman QB, and it's honestly probably best if we just sim to the Kent State game. Well, we are 2-8 and eight right now, which is not good, and you could even say it's disappointing since we're sitting at the bottom of our division, but in that time period, we landed a lot more recruits, including Daniel Pollard, who I talked about earlier, and Demarcus Fields, a five-star. I honestly thought it was a long shot we'd get the 6'4 athlete, but because we did, for the time being, we have the 11th best recruiting class in the country, and looking in the challenges list, we just got to keep that in the top 25. The battle for the wagon wheel is at Kent State this year, but once again, it's in a blizzard, and I'm extremely excited to play this one. Third and goal on the goal line. They're not going to get it. We're going to force the fumble. That is a huge hit. Harper's going to pick it up. Please tell me he is fast enough. I cannot believe that just happened. I was expecting them to get into the end zone there. And even though this season has been a complete failure, if we're able to pull off a win here, I will consider it a success. I really don't like the idea of running on this play, but I feel like it can fool them and it does. What a first half we just had. One little detail I do think is cool is you can see the concession stands in Kent State Stadium behind the end zone. And I know it is such a minor detail, but if EA can get that stuff in the new NCAA football game, I promise you it'll be so much better. You know what? It might have been a 2-8 and eight year, but Kent State couldn't beat us, and that is something we should be proud of. Going into the offseason, we already have 22 of our 25 scholarships used up. Now, Dejan Jennings probably does need to become a better passer, but our offense honestly leans on our junior halfback, and it works. We are going to lose our best receiver, who's a senior, but freshman rusher Nick Singleton had 7.5 sacks, which was only a few off from being top in the country, and I have never seen a team so desperate to sign a head coach back after going 3-9, and nine, but I got an extension for it. There is some bad news though as a couple freshmen want to transfer out and one of these wide receivers was going to be the future of the program. They're both transferring off to their new teams but you know who really doesn't care? Me because those guys are replaceable and after landing three more recruits on the team it became official that we were going to finish with a top 25 recruiting class which knocks off the first of six challenges in this rebuild. I really didn't realize how good of a job I did until I started scrolling back and there are so many high overalls in here including 6'4 athlete DeMarcus Fields, who's going to make for a great receiver. With off-season training, Dejan Jennings is up to an 85 overall, and it only took a couple of seasons for this entire roster to only consist of players from the state of Ohio. Now, my strategy has to be to build the best team by year five, because that'll obviously be our championship window, so I'm going to redshirt some juniors. And what we need out of this year's recruiting class is a bunch of JUCOs. So if I go for some high overall JUCOs instead, like Tyrone Allen, it'll help us assemble an even better team by that fifth season. I don't love that we're projected to be at the bottom of our division, this year, but what I do love is playing Youngstown State to start the season, and we will take that. I'm also really excited to see if we end up landing some of these top-notch recruits, including two-star Juco Nick Lewis and Tyrone Allen. I think those Jucos are going to be game-changing, and I'm ready to get straight into conference play. I wasn't expecting to beat either of those teams, but I don't even care because we got ourselves another receiver, and it's not very likely that we win at undefeated Western Michigan either, so this result is huge. Now we're going into a ranked game with some momentum, and this is the perfect week for me to 
schedule visits for all of these recruits. A win here would probably really impress them, but unfortunately, it seems like there's still not many fans in the crowd. By the end of this five-year rebuild, that is an issue that has to be fixed, but at least for now, we'll be okay, and I think we're going to get the first touchdown of the day as Dejan Jennings makes a terrible, terrible read. On the bright side, we are going to score the first points of the day, and so far, we're honestly just cruising. I did just notice we have two mascots behind the end zone right now, and I'm going to take a sack and fumble the ball, so I probably shouldn't have been looking at them. That was a terrible decision on my part. He's probably going to return this to the house, and this is why I am a terrible NCAA football player. At least I pointed out this cool guy. You know, ever since that moment, things have just gone terribly for us as they score again, but win or lose, I do not regret my decision. I'm simply going to admire when things look cool in these smaller school stadiums, and it's not the end of the world because here in the fourth quarter, we have a chance to take a lead on this drive. I'm going to roll out with Dejan Jennings. He's not even a scrambler, and that is why he fumbles the ball. That's another huge fumble for us today. So I can already see the comments about how I should probably slide, but you know what? It's going to be okay. They're going to go ahead and take a three-point lead on us, but their mascot better stop celebrating right now. With 16 seconds left, I am looking to make that mascot cry. We are going to take our out to Williamson, and we just have to get in here. The pass is off. Rutledge holds on to it. So we're going to beat our first top 25 team in this rebuild. And that's right. We just convinced pretty much everybody to come to the school with that. I legit just pulled in two five-star recruits casually like it was nothing. And I'd love to keep playing, but we have to sim to our next ranked game against Miami, Ohio, which we'll be going in to as the top team in our division. They are seven overalls better than us though, and of course, we're gonna have to play in the rain. So far, we've done a decent job of staying in it, but we've had a lot of drops and fumbles due to the rain, so I'd love to pull this one off, but I do think it's gonna be challenging. The interesting thing is we have a 6'4 receiver, so I'm gonna throw it up to him, and even though we are gonna have a lot of drops, I probably should just pass through the weather anyway. That should have been a pick. We're gonna take it in, and I've definitely found my strategy. Even though the weather's bad, passing is what always works for us. The halfback wheel route is going to be wide open. We're going to get it back at 21-21. And now on this third and eight, we need to get a stop, which we're going to do. I can definitely tell that they're about to bring the blitz on this play. So I came prepared. Williamson gets out and he gets down to the 10. This is setting up to be a perfect ending to the first half. We have the ball and Jennings is going to get down to the two. But I wanted to make sure that the Red Hawks didn't get the ball back at all before the second. Because of that conscious decision to watch the clock, we still have control of the game with a few minutes remaining. And assuming we can get into the end zone here, we will have a lead, but the throws have been a bit off. Don't feel great about this third and 10 play call, but I'm going to throw it up the seam and that should have been a pick. After watching that three and out, you'll see we're taking a three point lead and that made our mascot want to get down on his knees. But I don't think he realizes that the job is far from finished. They're about to score. And if we can't score a touchdown, this one's going to be over. They just locked up the halfback screen, but we still get out of there. Yet it's not enough making this a crucial fourth and two where we're just going to take the smart read for once. And that felt like the right decision, but I felt like I had someone wide open. We do on this play. Danny Rawlings is streaking down the field. He's going to break a tackle down inside the five, which single-handedly probably just won us this football game. All I'm going to say is we just beat a top 10 team on the road, and I'm ready to go ahead and get into the MAC Conference Championship. But wait, that statement might have been a little premature. Never mind, it should be all good. We're going to beat Kent State, and that means we've clinched a winning record versus our rivals in this five-year rebuild, which is the second challenge off the board. And since we have the tiebreaker over Miami, Ohio, this last regular season game result really doesn't matter at all, and we're still going to win. Our conference Conference championship opponent is Northern Illinois though, and they're ranked eighth in the country for a reason. So I would love to take an early lead on this possession. We have our guy in the flat and our tight end is so quick. Dejan Jennings set a school record with that pass as well, but that was the last good news of the half as since then we have collapsed. If we want to lift that Mac trophy, we need to pull off a comeback now. That was a beautifully run route, but it's going to be underthrown into an interception. And when I say I do not want to talk about this final score, I don't want to see any comments about it. I want nothing. It has just been terrible. Terrible. It's painful enough having to watch them celebrate like this. With no one in the Heisman finalists and no conference championship trophy, the challenges list is left with these four objectives to still complete, and we might as well just forfeit this bowl game before it even starts. The hardest part about this entire rebuild is building a MAC team to compete in the college football playoffs if we ever make it, and I'm honestly shocked that we only lost by one to Michigan. Once again, we're losing a couple different players to the transfer portal, and then we had one guy that wanted to transfer in, J.P. Simpson, but I don't want him. With the 24th best recruiting class in the country, I feel like we already got about everybody that we would 
need, and I am glad I recruited fullbacks because sometimes they can make for a great tight end. Now, I'm honestly not sure if this team's going to be any better than last year's, but I am going to change our offensive style from spread to air raid, and I believe that's what Dejan Jennings needs to have a great senior year. I'm definitely not happy our first game is against Ohio State, but we might as well get that loss out of the way. And it's honestly okay because our goal for this season isn't to win a natty, but just to win a MAC championship. Now, recruiting wise, there's going to be very few updates because we're just going to try to go for the best of the best in Ohio. And what will actually be important are the three games I choose to jump into this year, which will probably be later on. Getting a win over the Bearcats is big, but what will actually end up being important is these conference matchups like this one at Eastern Michigan. All I want is to get back into the MAC conference championship, and I think we have a decent chance. And I'm going to go ahead and sim to our game against the Red Hawks, which is going to be massive. Fortunately for us, our winning streak stayed alive. We even barely snuck by Central Michigan. And during that time, I landed multiple players, which will probably come in and get some good minutes for us next season. Pretty much everything is trending up in the program besides our stadium atmosphere. And I'm not happy we're only filling a third of our stadium, but it has to be full for this upcoming game. We're hosting the number one offense in the country, and that was enough to draw in a pretty big crowd versus number seven, Miami, Ohio. This single game will end up deciding who wins our division. And I love that we came out and set the tone by getting a defensive stop. Now, Lionel Harrell, the junior running back, is hitting outside. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because we recruited him in the first year, and now he has finally gotten onto the field. We have the ball in the red zone, so we should score here, and that corner route is not going to work. I accidentally hurried it up, and I could take a timeout to take the field goal, but I want to go for it anyway, and that was a really, really bad decision. I hope it doesn't bite us in the end. I thought it was a good decision because it seemed like this was going to be a high-scoring offensive game, but that's not what it's been, and because of that, I probably should just take in our three. We're about to hold Miami, Ohio to three, and no, we're not. I definitely spoke way too soon there, and if we don't pick up this third down, I should probably take the field goal, which I'm going to have to do. I learned my lesson from the last time. Let me go ahead and fake this one. They are in defense for it though. That might have been a bad decision. We're going to hold on to it. I understand I might be playing a little aggressive, but I feel like that was worth it as we're going to tie it back up. And I could have sworn we got in there, but it just allowed us to burn off more clock by wasting time. So going into halftime, it is 14 to 14. I understand that I made a lot of stupid decisions. So we are fortunate to be in this position. And that was a bad, bad read. I thought we were going to beat the press. The biggest issue I have is I lock in on one receiver and then I don't look for any other reads, but it's a good thing that our defense is so good because I don't think it's going to end up making a difference and this time it's going to be an underthrow but I promise you our freshman receiver has the speed to make these plays. Well approaching about four minutes left in this game we are in a bad position as it is now fourth and three and we must pick this up to stay in it which we are not going to be able to do. That means we're going to have to get a defensive stop if we want any chance of being in it and how on earth does their quarterback move like that? He's been the one player that we have not been able to stop and now they are just running it down our throats. They're about to score again so you you know what? It's probably best if we just let them score and please do. Since we have all three of our timeouts remaining, if we are able to go down the field and score and then get it back to them, we can force a defensive stop and still have a chance to actually win. It's definitely not very likely, but it gives us a better chance than what would have happened if they just ran out the rest of the clock and kicked three. So I felt like we made the smart decision and we are just lasering them. I mean, we're about to score within like 15 seconds. And because I'm so aggressive, I am going to go for two here. I don't know why I did that. That was very dumb. So not only are we chasing stops, but we're also going to be chasing points. Now we have gotten them to a third and 12. They went with the run again and they almost got it. But since they didn't, my plan kind of worked and we have a chance to at least send this game into overtime. With no timeouts remaining, I have one rule and that one rule is I cannot take a sack once. The second I do that, pretty much all the time on the clock is going to run out and that was almost an interception. But it's starting to get to the point where I don't know if we're going to be able to move this ball down the field and that's a dot. What a huge throw that was. I wasn't sure if he'd be able to complete it. Our tight end is going to get open. He's going to be able to get down inside the 10 and with eight seconds left I want to go back to him on the corner route but it's very heavily guarded so it all comes down to this one play I see a couple people that might get open that throw is way off but we are going to be able to get in and that wasn't even the guy I was targeting but I don't care I'm going to take it our halfback is open but Dejan Jennings misses the throw I am sick to my stomach right now granted this loss is on me for being way too aggressive but unless Miami Ohio loses twice that ruins our fourth season because I'm expecting them to win out I'm gonna go ahead and just sim to week 14 and the one time I don't play 
play it, our rivals destroy us. That's embarrassing as we're going to finish the year with three losses. And what a waste of Dejan Jennings' senior year. I mean, Leon O'Hara is going to be amazing next year, but I'm really disappointed with how this all went. It's getting to the point where I feel like I am definitely going to fail the challenges and this rebuild, but we'll see what happens because it all comes down to this one last year. I mean, it is a positive that we're only losing five seniors, but we also just lost the greatest quarterback in Akron history, and none of these new guys are going to help us take down a big school if we're even able to make the playoffs. First, we should probably focus on winning the MAC since we haven't even done that, and I'm not sure if senior quarterback Pat Cunningham is going to be able to get it done. Now, the one thing that could help is taking all of these recruiting points and putting them over into coach upgrades, but I'm not happy. I was only able to rebuild this team up to an 88 overall. I mean, I know I had some restrictions and stuff, and it's cool that this team is fully from the state of Ohio, but I still have these four challenges to complete in just one year. There's not much I can do besides just getting through the season and hoping that results go our way. After looking at the rest of our schedule, our toughest three opponents are Cincinnati, Northern Illinois, and then Miami, Ohio, obviously. So I have to jump into my first of three games against the Bearcats. And at least the stadium is full, even in this bad weather. Even if I end up failing the rebuild because I gave myself too many restrictions, at least I fixed the program a good amount. And it's time to see what Pat Cunningham's all about. This is the freshman we recruited at the beginning of this, and he has already thrown an interception. To be completely fair, it's on his receiver for creating no separation, but this is still a really rough start for the Zips. Midway through the second quarter, we are still trailing by possession, but Samuel Horn just got wide open, and I think he's about to gash everybody with his 95 speed for a massive touchdown for us. I don't understand why they went with no help over the top, but I'm not going to complain. It's going to work out for us, and we're going to force a fumble. Their quarterback dropped it. We're going to pick it up. All of a sudden, things are going our way, and this is probably a really bad decision, but I'm just going to throw it up to our 6'4 receiver. He's going to catch it. That was literally a dream come true, and before the half, we're going to get the ball back again. I cannot believe how fast we've turned this around, but now the freshman halfback is on the kick return, and look at Dallas Brady go. He got us inside the 40, and now I'm just going to throw it up again. We are going to score another touchdown. Danny Rawlings has been around forever, and at the end of the day, we were able to just hold on to secure a huge win. Pat Cunningham is actually really good, and to start conference play, I have to play this game. Northern Illinois is probably the best team in the conference, but they are not able to stop Samuel Horn as he is going to get into the end zone, and we've gotten them to a third and goal, so hopefully we can get a stop. Please, someone make a tackle. I thought they were about to get in, but we will take that for sure. So far, Samuel Horn has done a great job, so I'm going to keep on targeting him, and you have got to be kidding me, just when I talk good about him. As you can see, this game has had a lot of frustrating ups and downs, and I just got completely railed. It was fourth and five, and I guess our offensive line decided they didn't have to block, but we just got a user pick, and Holmes better be quick, because I think he can house this. I'm sure this game seems like chaos to you, but it's just been a bunch of turnovers, and there's another one. And listen, as much as I love you all, I do not want to spend more money on giving away another jersey, so I'm going to try my hardest to complete everything, even if it's not very possible. That drop might hurt us, but I'm going to have to go with the play action here on third down. Our quarterback is not fast, and that's a bad throw. But if you know me, I am not going to settle for three points here, and that was the worst decision of my life. I've made so many bad decisions in this video, so it's really my fault. And what was that? Okay, the computer is just cheating us at this point. I have never seen that happen once in my life, and now they just bombed us for a big game. But getting a third and 13 stop here could make a big difference for us. Their quarterback throws it, and that's an interception. Please, Holly holds on to it. My biggest struggle with using Pat Cunningham is I am used to having a scrambler, and he is a pocket passer. He's like 65 speed, but this play that he just extended is going for a ton of yards. This has been stressful, but I think we're going to get in here. And this is a very important two-point conversion, which we're going to get with the backup. I have no idea why he's in the game, but it says Pat Cunningham will return if needed, so hopefully that's true because it is third and four and we are going to get the blitz in. I thought I was too aggressive in sending it, but what are they doing? With two minutes remaining, trailing by three points, they are punting the ball back to us instead of going for it. One first down is going to seal it, which we're going to not get. I refuse to believe that can happen two times in a row, and thankfully we will actually get this one, so now it's confirmed that we're going to stay undefeated, and I'm really surprised we came out of that on top. Since I've jumped into the last two, all I can really do is start simming stuff, and only beating Eastern Michigan by 13 is a little scary. I'll take it though, as we're also going to beat Ball State. It only took us five seasons, but we've made it, and playing at winless Central Michigan feels like it's going to be a blowout. I'm hoping that Pat Cunningham can somehow get into the Heisman race, but so far, he's had no luck. Now, I was originally going to save this Miami-Ohio game, but they've lost four. They're not very good this year, and we're going to dominate. Instead, I think I'm going to save it for rivalry week against Kent State, because we lost to them when I simmed it last year, and can you believe we held the Bobcats to zero. This team is starting to perform really well, and at this point in the year, we're ranked seventh in the country. I don't think we're going to have any issues with our rivals, but I figured I might as well jump in just to make sure, and that route was crazy. It's 
definitely closer than I'd like to be at this point, but we still can pull away. And they have played well, but we are just a little bit better. We ended up finishing 4-1 and one versus our rivals in this rebuild. In our last regular season game of the year is against Bowling Green. We need to stay undefeated, and we're going to do so. That's going to get us a great rematch for the conference championship, and there's no way I'm losing this again. When we made it here in year three, Northern Illinois was the team that beat us, so we got to play well. And our speed demon Samuel Horn has broken free. I'm going to send it to him, but that was the worst pass I've ever seen. Even if we get in and make the college football playoffs, we are not beating a good team. And it is almost comical at how bad these teams on offense are, but their quarterback can do stuff like this. And because of that, we're going to fall behind three to zero. I honestly just want to score so bad, but I can't do a thing. And if they end the first half with a touchdown, I'm going to lose my mind. We have no one over there. And I can't believe we're in this position. Who would have thought our offense would be non-existent today? If I'm remembering right from the last time, the one player that toasted them was Samuel Horn. So I'm just going to throw it up to him and he's putting in the work already. Nothing else has worked so far. So I am strictly going to target him and see what can happen. And I'm going to need him to hold on to this ball when I roll out and throw it to him, which he drops. If it wasn't 5 a.m., I would be much more upset. But out of respect for my neighbors, I'm going to keep calm, go for it on fourth and three and throw an interception. I am not enjoying the sliders I have been using in dynasty mode. The defense has literally played so well. We should not be in this position, but I am struggling immensely. But this time I'm not going to pass it. I'm simply just going to run the ball and the curse has finally been broken. Due to that, I'm hoping it starts to become much easier to get into the end zone. And if our receivers could ever get open, I'd be feeling a lot better about this game, but I can't do anything. I don't understand what's going on, but both of our teams have barely moved the ball all day. And I swear they're going to get a lucky route bounce for a big play now that I say that. I cannot think of a time where I've played this bad, but here we are and they are about to get the two point conversion. It has been such a long day of struggles and their man to man press is locking us up. No one's getting open. I mean, just an ounce of separation would be nice, but we haven't been able to get it. And this is a huge third and 10. I'm going to take the out route, which is a bad throw. I hate that I'm doing this, but I think it's smart for us to take a field goal. And now on third and five, I just need to come up big time with the stop, which we're not going to do. The corner's going to miss the tackle and I think they're about to go all the way. This has been the worst rebuild I've ever done and I'm not sure it's gonna get any better. But that one little sack gives me hope. If we can get a stop on the goal line, we'll be okay as it's only gonna be a one possession game. I just wanna go a few plays without struggling. I put out the halfback wheel route and we are finally going to get a big gain. This is gonna get us down inside the five. So hopefully we can just get in and that will do it. 17 all, three minutes remaining and we just need to get one defensive stop. The issue of course is now that we've played great defense, defense all game. With all the pressure on the line, we'll probably give up something stupid. And there it is. I spoke it into existence like I've been doing every single time. Now they're probably just going to chew the clock and run into the end zone. And we'll see if we can do so. I shot the gap perfectly, but he broke the tackle and we ended up still doing just enough. College football playoffs on the line. It's going to all come down to this. And look at this start. I could not have asked for a better one. And we are going to take a lot of yards on this play. The issue is with no timeouts, I cannot get tackled in bounds unless we pick up a first down. And we we are flying down the field right now, so I might need to take a little bit of a pause. We're going to go with the run and just get a little bit extra gains here, and it's going to be risky to do it again, but I'm going for it, and we get in. This has been such a stressful game, but it all is going to come down to one final play, and my hopes of getting this rebuild challenge complete are still alive, technically. It wasn't easy to accomplish, but we now have a MAC championship trophy, and that's great and all, but we didn't have a Heisman finalist, so unfortunately for me, I have failed one of the six challenges in today's video, and we're still going to see if I can win a championship in these playoffs, but I have to give away a jersey to a random commenter on this video. Also, please do not fall for any spam bot comments. I don't have a telegram, so it's not me. And the only way I'll ever be reaching out to a winner is through my official Instagram or Twitter. Now that I got that out of the way, it's safe to say that this has been a decent start as we are moving the ball or not. And I'm going to lose my mind if we lose because it drops in the rain. I think with the restrictions I had, especially the five-year and only Ohio recruits rule, I did a very good job with this rebuild, but this team is still not that great and Horn is just making a play of the century. Well, hello. Apparently we have some life in this game. And I know we struggled with Northern Illinois, but right now Bama's looking easier. <laughs> If I can limit turnovers, we might be able to do it, and I'm just going to keep going to Horn. On every third and long play, I'm looking his way, and how was that so bad? I bullet passed it, and this should have been an easy first down. But since it wasn't, we just lost all of our momentum, and Alabama is about to score a touchdown. I feel like I just got robbed. I made the right read on third down, and they're pressing us again, so this time I'm going to go back to him. And look at this. He is just toasting everybody. I don't understand. He only has about 95 speed. He's only a sophomore. But Sam 
Samuel Horn is keeping us in it, which is very needed considering Alabama is about to score again unless we can lock up and that should have been a pick. Now I feel like we have to chase points before the half and I'm going to throw this one up to our 6-4 receiver if he can moss, but since he can't, the pressure is on to pick this play up and I might have had somebody, but Alabama is going to force us to punt and I swear they're going to get a field goal out of this too. Well, luckily for us, we know that Nick Saban doesn't recruit kickers. He only recruits players that are really good at every other position and because of that, we are going into the half only down by four. After getting a stop, they also decided it would be smart to press us, so once again, I was going to try to go up to our best receiver, but since I couldn't on that play, I might as well attempt it this time, and how on earth is he that open? There was definitely safety help over the top, but if he's going to continue to get open, I'm going to continue to target him, and that is exactly why I only throw to Samuel Horn. The one time I switch it up, we just get burnt, and now they are going to score a touchdown on us. I'm trying my hardest to keep up with Alabama. We might have a slant open here, but I feel like I have to go for it on fourth and nine, and notice how they're pressing on one side of the field, but they backed up on Horn's side. I had to throw it to the other one. They ended up scoring a touchdown afterwards, and I don't think we can come back, but I'm going to try my hardest, and on this third and one, I think we have everything locked up, but maybe I need to be a little bit more optimistic because we just got a defensive stop and we have the ball back again. So if anybody would like to get open, we might have an actual chance. That is exactly why I only go with streaks and just hope that they burn because I don't know what else to throw against this defense, and I can't believe it, but we're stuck on a fourth and 21, so I'm going to send up a prayer and it's not going to work. I might not have played well, but you can't say I didn't try my hardest. And at this point, we might as well just commit to the run just to try to get a stop and oh my gosh, they lost it. They lost the ball. There's no way that they reversed that after watching that replay, but they did anyways. I'm just going to have to run commit one more time. And of course they went with the pass, but it's a missed throw. And boys, this is not over yet. I've been saving all three of my timeouts for a reason. And on this kick return, we're going to get a great start here with Brady. We need a touchdown. We need three stops and then we need another touchdown, but we have a fast receiver. So I'm going to try to bomb him and it's going to work. Sam Yulhorn, you cannot forget his name. And now we just need to force a three and out. They're shedding one tackle though. Come on, someone bring him down. Well, evidently that defense wasn't the move and he is just killing us with these broken tackles. I'm going to have to run commit again. This time we get a stop. We've gotten them to a third and 12. I knew they would probably go with the pass instead of the run. All we have to do is get a sack. Come on, boys. No, we forced a stop. So we're going to get the ball back, but the clock's going to run. And that's only going to leave us with about 25 seconds left. Maybe we can get a crazy return though. Brady, come on. All I asked for was a chance. And now we do have that chance, but we are going to need to start delivering dots. I really don't like this formation. I'm going to try to go over to the sideline and that's an interception. No. And I tried my hardest boys, but I've failed a rebuild. I wasn't able to win a national championship with Akron in five years, and I only ended up completing four of the six challenges.